Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for the access that you've given us to boldly come before the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I pray for those who are going through the grief of having lost a loved one, that you would comfort them and give them strength. I pray for the direction of this ministry. We are thankful for the privilege that we have to be able to study your word together. I ask that you would filter out all of the nonsense, but seal to our hearts the magnificent truth of your word. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We're going to continue on in our study in the book of Revelation, uh, looking at chapter 12. Uh, I'm not sure how long uh, I want to hover over this chapter, uh, but we always see something uh, uh, new, different, uh, every time we study this book. It's not like, well, okay, we've kind of we've we've covered chapter twelve, and we don't need to look at that again. I want you to uh, all take a moment uh, to take note of something that I believe is is very significant here in uh, a couple of verses here of chapter twelve, uh, verses five and six. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness. And it goes on to say that she was cared for there for 1260 days. She fled into the wilderness. He came. He left. You flee into the wilderness. Just stop, folks, and think for a moment what we just read. The Holy Spirit basically states, out of you, that is Israel, out of you came your long-awaited Messiah. He was caught up to God's throne and you fled into the wilderness. Just like that. No mention, take note, no mention of Jesus' life or His ministry. No mention of the church age, which ended with it being caught up to God's throne. The same place, same location that Christ was. He just skips past all of that. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I can understand that. Uh, why should the Holy Spirit make mention of it? Whenever He came unto His own, they received Him not. There, thereby, th them having no reason at all to even believe that there was a church. Okay? Okay? Out of you came the Messiah. He was caught up to God's throne. You fled for safety. Just like that. Look at what I'm trying to, I want you to, to take note of what he did not say there. Oftentimes we'll look at what he says, but we won't look at what he didn't say. Now, from on the surface, that might seem a little odd. Okay. Until, until we stop to remember, to keep in mind as we go forward through this chapter, that the church was a mystery. We're looking at, I believe, and this is the position of this ministry, the prophetic nature of Revelation. Not the preterist view, the amillennial, uh, amillennial view, which teaches that there'll be no millennial reign of, of uh, on earth. 
We're looking at prophecy, not history. This is not, I've said before, this is not a history book. Now, it does in the sense that it includes facts that, that are certainly part of history. But it's prophecy, folks. Uh, 1260 days. 1260 days cannot, a serious study of this book, you cannot, you cannot look at 1260 days as being 1260 years when we look at the order of the events in the text. And I'll acknowledge the uh, I'm more than willing to acknowledge the fact that there are explanations as to why so many do look at this as, as already uh, past fulfilled history. It's history. It's been fulfilled in the past. But the church was a mystery. And as I pointed out, Matthew 24, you don't see the church. It's talking about Jesus is speaking about all these things that take place within this period that we know is Daniel's 70th week. If you take and remove the church, the, just completely just separate, take set apart Christ's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, uh, the uh, first Pentecost, the church age, up, up until the time of the rapture, if you just take that mystery out, it goes right from Matthew 24 to the book of Revelation. We know that, that Israel today is still awaiting her long-awaited Messiah. She doesn't, as a, as a nation, she, ha, she does not believe that Christ was indeed her Messiah. She's looking for another, in fact. So it goes without saying that they, they're not too keen on believing in the church. Uh, because the church, to, to believe in the church, would uh, infer, infers that, that God set Israel aside in unbelief so that salvation could come to the Gentiles. The church was a mystery. So when we see the child caught up here, what I want to point out here to you, when, when we look at the child being caught up, the church is missing. I want you to think of how a Jew would read this. And I understand we're not Jews, and I understand we're, 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 we're neither Jew. We're one in Christ. We're neither, and I'm going to talk more about the, the one in Christ, uh, We're, we're neither Jew nor Gentile. But think about how a Jew would read this. Jesus' birth, okay, clearly, okay, is seen here. Yet his ministry, his entire life's ministry is missing. Okay? Okay? It almost begs the question, why would God not mention His life, His ministry, the church? Okay? So that's, that's the first thing that I, I want you to, to consider here as we go forward through this uh, marvelous chapter. Now this has been pointed out in, 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 in days past. It, it, it's worth repeating. It's worth reminding you. We're looking at when we look at Israel, the the, the main the main players here: Israel, uh, Satan, and uh, the male child, which which most uh, take as being our Lord. We're looking at Israel, the dragon, and and Jesus. Uh, so it's it's basically God, Satan, and his people, Israel. We're looking at three corporate entities. The woman represents an entire nation, okay? The dragon represents, even though he's a real individual, Satan, okay? He represents ten nations. And then we look at the male son slash child, 
male slash son slash child, and I'm going to talk a little more about that, appears to just be an individual, but so the male, the male son, even though it appears to be an in individual, it shouldn't be interpreted as an individual, but a corporate entity, okay, just like just like the woman and the dragon is what I'm trying to say, to be consistent. So, you know, it would be odd for the, you know, us to look at the woman as representing uh, a corporate entity, Israel, uh, Satan to be representing a corporate entity, the ten nations, and but to not see the, but then to see, just only to see the male son or the male son child as just, just a single soul individual, okay? Now the, the pattern is broken, okay? That just seems odd. It seems odd to me. It's always seemed odd to me, and it seems odd to many others as well. So there's an indication that something a little tricky is going on here. Now John is seeing the rescue of the church, I believe, before the dragon seeks to attack Israel. Not the rescue of Christ before the dragon seeks to attack Israel. Uh, we need to, to consider the difference between words here, and, and words are important, folks. Grammar is important. Sentence, sentence structure is important. Context is important. Uh, background history is important to some extent. There's a difference between ascension, Christ's ascension, and what we see taking place with the male child being caught up. And I've pointed this out before, as well as, as has many, as have many others. John is seeing the rescue of the church before the dragon seeks to attack Israel. Okay, now I can understand how people could could take. The, uh, the ascension of Christ, to, to look at that in this passage as, well, that's talking about the ascension of Christ. And, and immediately after Christ was, Jesus was caught up to God's throne, because that, it's only talking about Him that the dragon seeks to attack Israel, and I can understand that. When we consider what occurred after Christ ascended. The problem with that is with the 1260 days and all of the rest of it. it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit the preterist position, the, the preterist narrative. Okay? It, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, that would make no sense unless you're a preterist. If, if someone doesn't see a future demonic attack on Israel described in Revelation 12, then they're certainly not going to see the rapture of the church in verse 5. Why should Israel, and, I, and I've got to ask, why would Israel even need, I'm going to try to explain why I believe that Israel, there's no need for, for Israel to even see here in the text that the church is, is, is what is caught up. Okay? There's no, there's no need. You know, Satan sends upon them a, 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 a delusion that they might, God sends upon them a strong delusion that they might believe that which is false, that which is a lie, okay? But, you know, moreover, they, they rejected their Messiah. Israel rejected her Messiah, all right? He came unto his people, his own, they received him not. Everything that was was given them, presented to them, okay? That Look, think of it like this, too. I think it's safe to, to say that God is not trying or will not, will not be trying in the tribulation period to get Israel to come into the truths concerning that which was given through Paul to the church, 
Okay? They're not going to be church age saints. They won't be baptized into the Holy Spirit. Okay? Will they be led by the Holy Spirit? Yes. Will they be directed and guided by the Holy Spirit, taught by the Holy Spirit? Yes. The Holy Spirit will come upon them for service, but they there is something very unique about us, dearly beloved. There's something very unique about the church in the sense that our blessings are spiritual not earthly we actually have the holy spirit living inside us now if if you've made the mistake of thinking that in the tribulation period tribulation saints will have the holy spirit living in them well i i forgive you okay that is not the case that is not going to happen they Paul says, do you not know that as many of you have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into His death and so on and so forth? That is not true of Israel. It never will be. No tribulation saint will ever be able to walk around saying, I am a, a, a born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm indwelt by the Holy Spirit. I've been baptized into Christ's death. Uh, I, and not, He won't be able to do that. I don't want you to take away from the uniqueness of the church or the, or the age in which we're living in which God is not even imputing men's trespasses against them. So we're going to look at that. I'm going to run through that again really quickly. The Ascension versus Harpazo here. Uh, I might even try to put a chart up on the screen. Uh, everyone knows out there that I'm pre-trib. Okay? If you have a straightforward understanding of Revelation, then you should find the pre-trib rapture confirmed in Revelation 12.5. Okay? If, if you don't care about the analogy of Scripture, and by that I mean, you know, uh, Scripture supporting Scripture... Uh, scripture interpreting Scripture, uh, cross-referencing. Uh, if you don't care about any of that, you just want to come here and look at 12.5 and say, well, that, that can't be the church. Well, you've ignored the analogy of Scripture. But a, a serious understanding of what's going on here, balanced with other verses of Scripture, you, you should have no problem at all finding the pre-trib rapture confirmed right here in Revelation 12.5. I'm, I'm going to put up on the screen here the, the, the words in the original text here that are from the text. Uh, we, we see three words, male, son, child. Okay, Male, son, and child. These are three distinctly uh, different words, separate words. And she brought forth a man child there's two words man and child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child there's a third word was caught up unto god into his throne okay in the greek if you read that in the greek this is what it would sound like and she brought forth a weon arson who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her technon was caught up unto God and to his throne. Why does he use all three of these words? Well, I can only tell you what I think, and it doesn't make it right. But when I look at the meaning of the word weon, the, the word means a son by birth or adoption. Okay? By birth or adoption. You'll see references to the where the word is used in reference to the Son of God, the sons of Israel, uh, sons of God, that is us, you and me. The, the word denotes that the individual has the same nature as their father. That's what the word means. 
Now, when you look at the next word, the next word, arson, or sin, it, the word simply means male. It's, it's the gender, male, man, okay? Uh, you, you, can't include, you cannot include females in that word. It's strictly a gender word, man. When you look at technon, the word means a child of either sex. It can be either, male or female. It can also be either literal or figurative. It's used of the child, uh, uh, the child of God, or the child of Satan. Okay, both believers and non-believers. Okay, uh, you know, uh, my child in the faith, uh, or you know, uh, 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 or it's it's actually used in the context of those who are not believers. So those are the three words that we see. The word is used extensively, okay, of, uh, and I'm looking at technon here, the word child, okay? That's because that's what it is, is said is caught up to God's throne. It's used extensively of earthly children, of earthly parents, it's used of Mary uh, in speaking to, to her son, Jesus. So it's used of an earthly child there. It's used in the, in the parable of the prodigal son, earthly child. That's an earthly child, the father's son. It was an earthly child. It illustrates the believer. It is used extensively of the children of God, technon. Extensively. We are children, technon of God. It's used figuratively of, of children of the bondwoman, uh, children of wrath, children of the devil. So you, you see, this, see the same word, technon, children of the devil, technon of the devil, children of wrath, technon of, of wrath, okay? It's used of converts to the faith. Uh, Paul called Timothy his child in the faith. His technon in the faith. And was caught up the child of her. Okay? Keep in mind whose child this is. It's the text says her. Okay? That's there. We're looking at a gender there. Was caught up her child. The child of her in the Greek. The Greek literally states, and was caught up the child of her. Her being the woman Israel. Now, many, many of you, you know, would agree that we often refer to a grown adult uh, child of ours uh, as being our child. I mean, you know, I can, you know, uh, when I was, I don't know how old, uh, I was really old, and my, my, my mother was still calling me her child, even though I was an adult. Her child could say, that could say it's Jesus. I suppose you could say, well, because that says it's it's her child. Well, then, and Jesus came forth from Israel. Therefore, this is referring to Jesus because it's our child. That's interesting. However, it's, it's also interesting that the father never refers to the son as his technon. Now, you may not want to build too much on that, but I, I want you to, to, to stay in that mind frame, that mindset here of the church being a mystery. Okay? God the Holy Spirit didn't even find it needful to remind the reader of this. And the context is the tribulation period. The context is Israel. Or the, 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 the primary audience, I would say, is Israel. Because we're gone. We've been caught up to God's throne. Whether you want to take this child being caught up to God's throne as Jesus or the, or the corporate body of the church, whether you do or, or you don't, we're still not here. Okay? In this period of God's wrath, Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, the church is not here. Okay? 
We're gone. We're already in heaven. The context that we're looking at here is, is I believe we're in the first half. The we see the woman flees. There's war in heaven. Satan's cast out. He's defeated and he's cast out. And Satan then pursues the woman, Israel. Okay? All right? And again, this is not a past preterist, you know, fulfilled prophecy. Well, that was this has already been fulfilled in the past. No, it hasn't. Uh, not in my opinion. It is future. And that is the context. Now, there's something else I want you to notice. Notice the word and, and, which is used twice. It's used twice immediately after this man, child, this technon was caught up in verse 5. Verse 6 says, and, and. These are connecting. This is a, and is a connecting conjunction. Okay? So the child is caught up and the woman fled into the wilderness. Then, it, then in verse 7 it says, and there was war in heaven. Okay? The, the, the thought has not been interrupted here. Okay? The fleeing of the woman into the wilderness and the warfare in heaven are both due to the man-child being caught up. All right? Uh, I, I've yet to find, to, to see where anyone has ever shown me where that there was war in heaven after Christ ascended. Now, I want to also look at the word now. There's a word now in verse 10 that I think is, in, is important to look at. And I heard a, a loud voice in, in heaven, a voice saying in heaven, Now, now is come salvation and strength. And, and we, see a, a, we see a string of other connecting conjunctions here. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. And if you're looking, uh, going through the King James Version, if you've got the use in the King James Version, the next word you see is for, for the accuser of our brethren. The word can mean because, the accuser of our brethren, or since the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which, which accused them before our God day and night. Now, the word now is in the Greek, the word RT. Now, and the word literally means at this instant, at this moment, at this instant. Not, it, 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 it's not like, okay, well, uh, I've got, I've got, I've got, if I said, well, okay, I've, I got cancer and I'm going to, and so now, and, and now I'm going to die. Well, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I'm not inferring that I'm going to die today. It's, maybe that's a bad illustration, but it's, what I'm trying to get you to look at here is what the word means is, it means at this instant. Okay? That's what the word means. At this instant. Now, at this time, at this moment, is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Okay? Well, now wait a minute. I thought we had the kingdom of our God. I thought we had quite a bit ahead of us here before we ever got to the point of the kingdom. But, but the word means at this instant. Which could not be at this instant unless Satan was cast out. The church has been caught up. Not Christ ascended, verse 5, and the woman fled into the wilderness, verse 6. Christ ascended on the mountain of transfiguration and then 
immediately the uh, woman fled into the wilderness. Someone's going to have to show me that. I, I don't. I don't. I haven't seen that. Well, the truth is, we don't see that. Our accuser, Satan. Dearly beloved, the rapture of the church is an event which causes Satan to have no more position in heaven. No more purpose. He has no, no, he has no more purpose. He serves no more function or purpose there. Okay? Which was obviously allowed, obviously allowed, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Which he did, what did he do? He accused us before our God day and night. Okay? Oh, look at Steve there. He's not, he's not acting very faithful. Uh, there's one of your kids, you know, and he's, he's, not, he's, not, he's not doing what he's supposed to do. Or look at what he's done. He's, look at the sin, okay? And, and Jesus points to the blood. Or the Father points to the blood. Or, but his accusations go nowhere. God has nothing against us. Our, our sins have been forgiven, cast as far as the east is from the west, buried in the depths of the sea. He says, to be remembered no more. There is no justification for that accusation other than God allowing him to, to be there and to, and to accuse the brethren day and night. But now all of a sudden we see there's no place for that. Why is there no place for that? Because we're not there. He's accusing, he's there accusing us down here, okay? Now we're up there, and he has no more reason to accuse us now, so he's, there's war in heaven, he's defeated, he's cast down, he's now where we were. I don't know how to put it any plainer than that. And the text says that there's no place found, okay, for Satan in heaven. No place found. The, the grammar, the text, the sentence structure makes it absolutely crystal clear, folks, this is not to be overlooked, that a, the, it, it was looked for and not found. Okay? Now, whether that means they, you know, they, they searched, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the military when they go through, you know, in clearing an area, you know, to make sure that uh, it's clear. It's... I, but there's no place found, even though it was it was searched, it was looked for, and there was no place. No place was found for them. They had no more place there. There was nothing there that would recognize their having been there. Okay? And then we have the word devour. And I, I, I mentioned this, I, I believe I, I did in a previous video. It's the intensified word for eat. You know, the, the dragon stood before the woman ready to devour her child as soon as it was born. Uh, uh, and I've suggested that that is Satan's attempt. It's been his, his, his purpose, his intent, from his desire from the church's beginning, at least from the church's beginning, if not further back than that, to consume... God's people, doctrinally, spiritually, that's what He's done. That's what He's tried to do all throughout human history. And I say that because He's all but replaced the true gospel with another today in the time in which we're living. I've preached a number of sermons on how I believe that the, the gospel of Christ in our present age which basically focuses on what he did, not what man must do, is barely imperceptible today. You just you don't hear many sermons taught today where the, its emphasis is on what Christ has done for his people. The emphasis, it's been reversed, it's been turned upside down. The whole entire emphasis is on what you must do to be redeemed, redeemed, born again, okay? To make yourself fit for heaven, you've got to do A, B, C, D, E, you know, and it goes on. 
That is not the gospel. That is another gospel that Paul warned the church about. The Holy Spirit through Paul in Galatians. You you could easily say, and I and I, I we can still be friends if you want to think that that that, that means that the the dragon stood before the woman ready to devour devour the child as soon as it was born that he was just simply out to kill Jesus. Well, when you talk about that, you're you're talking. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you can say that. But stop it for a moment and think about what it is that you're saying. If you're talking about Satan destroying our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're talking about Him destroying the Word, the seed, the promised seed, the Word. Okay, you can't separate doctrine from it, even if you did take that as physical. Okay? We know that He masquerades as an angel of light. Any attempt by the father of lies to destroy Christ, the word, equals, in my opinion, an attempt to replace God's word with a lie. Now, there's something that, that I want to remind you folks of, and I uh, maybe some of you don't need reminding. Some of, maybe some of you do. Maybe some of you are hearing this for the first time. But I believe that there is strong evidence, heavy, heavy evidence in my opinion uh, there's something else that comes into play here that is very strong evidence for this child being caught up technon being caught up to God's throne as it uh, having to do with the church uh, this mystical if you want to call it that relationship why I believe the child caught up includes his includes his body the church Perhaps it's best to say that, that it's you, you can't speak of the church being caught out, up without Christ being caught up because the body and the head are inseparable. You can't separate the two. Okay? Oh, Steve, it must be Jesus caught up. It's not us. Or, or, or Steve, it must be the church caught up, and it's not Jesus. I mean, come on, folks. Listen to me. I don't know how many of you actually knew this, that just how close that you are to Christ. I mean, there's there's close, okay, and then there's really close. Uh, I want to talk about really close. Just as in marriage, the two become one flesh. And that's an illustration. That's a mystery. Paul referred to that as a mystery. He said, I'm speaking with reference to Christ and the church. The two shall become one flesh. Okay? We see it, we read early in John that the word became flesh. We know that we become the righteousness of God in Christ, the very righteousness of God. Now, you can say, well, it's just easy for God to impute that to us just to say, okay, you be righteous as I am. You know, you know, I'm going to make you as righteous as I am just because I say you are. It's not just because he said we were, folks. He act, We were actually made the righteousness of God in Christ. That implies something was done more than just, well, I'm going to just call you righteous. Even though you're not, I'm just going to call you that. The most one of the most common verses is therefore if anyone is in Christ he's a new creature the old things are passed away behold new things have come all things have become new a new creation new creation an entirely new creation not a fixed uh, fixed up you know hammered down you know reworked you know uh, parts replaced you know feature of the old creation it's it's an entirely new cre creation. Okay, it's not God cleaning up the old man. It's not, you know, uh, him dressing up a corpse. It was an entirely new creation. Okay. And when we look at that new creation, it involves some, some very remarkable things that, that draw us not just near to, to Christ, but one with Christ, one with him. 
We know from Romans chapter 6, we were identified with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. When Christ died, folks, if you are a believer, I am telling you, I'm going to tell you right now, and I, I say this based upon the authority of God's word itself, I'm going to tell you that if you are born a born-again believer in Christ, that when Christ died, you died with him. That when he was buried, you were buried with him. When he rose from the dead, you rose with him. Okay? And and I have to go as far as to say that, that because we are co-seated with Christ in the heavenlies, when he ascended, we ascended with him. Okay? He took us with him. There, there has never been a time in which you have been apart, separated from Jesus Christ. Never. You may have been dead in trespasses. You certainly were dead in trespasses and sins. Okay? But that's the old man. That's not the eternal new man. You were made a new creation in Christ. We share in the body of Christ when we drink the, the cup of blessing. Okay? If... By being joined to the Lord, we are one spirit with him. In, in Jesus' prayer to the Father, John chapter 17, that, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us. Okay? The glory which you've given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one. One. Okay? How close are we to this male child that's, that's being caught up, this technon that's being caught up before God's throne prior to, just prior to Israel fleeing into the wilderness for 1260 days? And war breaking out in heaven where Satan, Michael and his angels defeat Satan and his angels, and they are cast down to earth where they now can no longer accuse us. Why? Because we're up there. They're down here. And and we somehow want to just say, go through this and, and say, well, this can't possibly be including us. Verse 5 can't possibly be including us. It's just talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. You can do that. And still be friends with me. But I can't do that, folks. I just can't. There is a unity that is involved here that we can't, we ought to, to by, by this time, we ought to have understood. We ought to know this, these things. Paul writes, do you not know, do not all of you know that your body, your one body, okay, or your individual, your plural, he switches to the plural. Your bodies, plural, are members of the one singular, he switches to the singular, temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. We're not a bunch of temples running around, as many people, many Christians tend to believe. We are members of that one single temple. When it comes to living our lives and work and service and ministry for the Lord, we know that, that we've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. Lord, are you saying I'm, I'm totally irrelevant here? I don't live? The text says, it is, Paul says, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. What is he talking about? The only thing that he could be talking about. Life, service, ministry comes through. the We, the branches, it is all supported by the vine. Comes our source of life. He is our source of life. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. It is Christ manifest in and through our lives by faith. Okay? That, these are things, folks, that, that you cannot, in my opinion, you cannot possibly look at all of these things as being that which is just the result of someone coming near 
beside someone. No, you have to be. No wonder Paul used that phrase in Christ so often. Okay? Christ. The mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's the head. Okay? From which all the body, all the body, by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered and knit together, increases with the increase of God. And he has made us un unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. The, the technon, the male child, is caught up to God's throne and will rule the, the nations with the rod of iron. We shall reign with him. Are we going to separate the two? We have never, not even once, ever been separated. We will never be separated. You were not a goat that Jesus went out and, and found and then somehow miraculously uh, transformed into a sheep. You were always his sheep. You won't ever pull up on the internet a picture of Jesus reaching down to rescue a goat. Okay? All right? The image does not exist. You've always been his. Always. We have, we have verses of Scripture that declare that unequivocally, without apology, that we, were, we always were his child. Okay? We are members. Ephesians chapter 5 tells us that we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, folks. That's pretty close. And he's raised us up together. He's made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ, crucified, buried, raised, co-seated with him, united with him in one spirit, one temple of which he's the head. That's quite close. That's, that's more than close. I don't even like using the word close. That's more than close, folks. That's one with, okay? So if you want to take this as, well, let's just see, that's just, just Jesus being caught up. Back in 34 AD or whenever, you know, whenever, pick, pick a year. I can't do that. Folks, we're not even separated from him when he returns at the second coming. He brings us with him. And then, of course, there's a time before we ever had even, even heard the name of Christ. Okay? Chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Separated, Paul says, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. You think that only refers to Paul? We are so one with him that we had to receive a new sinless nature that he could abide in. Since he could not be touched by sin, he couldn't be touched by the, the old man, the flesh. It was the only way that we could be made one with him, one body, not individual temples, but members of that one temple of God in the spirit. So she brought... She brings forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. That's future. And her child was caught up unto God into his throne. And we have a gap here, okay? Harpazo is the word. A sudden removal from danger, danger from being devoured. And I, I don't see any danger there. And you could say that Satan thought he may have succeeded in devouring Christ, the male child, by having him crucified, though in, in fact we know that's not really the case at all. That's not what happened. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Ye have taken, ye, the Jews, have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Was Christ harpazoed at his ascension? No, he was not. And while they beheld, he was taken up. The word is eporio, and a cloud hid them from their eyes, says, says the Greek. 
hid them from their eyes. That's interesting. Uh, it's, it's not that a, a cloud took him up or he went up into a cloud. The cloud hid him from their eyes. Acts 1 9. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was taken up. The word is Anna Lombano into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Anna Lombano. In John chapter 20, Jesus says unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended, Anabano, to my father, but go to my brother and, and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Revelation 12, 5, Harpazo. Is in Revelation 12, 5, is Jesus, is it, uh, well, Jesus is born, and then he ascends. No mention of his earthly ministry, or the church age, or the verse 6 then states, and the woman fled into the wilderness. Back, you know, to where I started at the beginning of this video. Folks, we can't have a headless body, and we can't have a bodiless head. I think we underestimate the, the, the real significance of, of the reality of our being so intimately identified with Christ that it's it almost it surpasses description. Why would God even feel the need to expound upon the body of Christ, his church, here in this con right here to Israel? Why? Okay? Or the life and the ministry of of their Messiah. Why does he appear to skip over that? Well, I told you why what I think. Why I think he, he does. First of all, they wanted nothing to do with him. They don't believe in the church today. What, what need is it? The church is in heaven. This is not dealing with the church, folks. It's dealing with them. I can, I can easily see why there would be a gap, or if you want to call it a parenthesis, or he skips over it, jumps over it. it I don't have any problem with that at all. God chooses his words carefully. I'm absolutely certain of that contrary to, to how we go about things. And bear in mind, he sends upon them a strong delusion that they might believe a lie. Okay? He's going to go into this long diatribe about the life and the message and the ministry of his Messiah, which is basically a, a do-over, a repeat. I've already given you that. You didn't want anything to do with that. And then he's going to go in, into this, you know, Real profound, deep, heavy explanation of, you know, the church and, you know, the past 2,000, nearly 2,000 years, church history. He's going to give them a lesson on church history and all that, just so that, what, what, they'll come to believe in him during the tribulation period. He sends upon them a strong delusion that they might believe what is false, okay? God gives us what we need. If you don't see anything else in that, look at it as as in the in the absence of what is not said, there's a, there's a lesson in that. God always gives us that what which we need, nothing more, nothing less. Okay, He meets our needs perfectly. Okay, and it's and it would we would be foolish, or I would be foolish to suggest to you people that that John somehow messed up and left some stuff out here. Really? Seriously? God saw no need to mention it, and probably for very good reason. What we're looking at here is, what we see is God's people needing a, a deliverer. Satan is intent on preventing God from providing that deliverer. Satan and a third of his angels are cast down to earth. Satan's intent on destroying the male child since his expulsion from heaven, you know, uh, historically he tried in numerous ways and failed. The woman, Israel, brings forth her child, the Messiah, and he is caught up to God's throne. The life and the ministry of Christ is skipped over, as well as the church, which was a mystery, which it, to me explains, it explains why there's no specific mention of the church or it being raptured, but we know different because we're not Israel. We're not in this period. We're not reading this book in that period. We are reading this book now, and we know that we're there. Okay? 
we know we're there in the text. So there's no mention. There's no mention of directly mention. Open, you know, the Lord could have easily, the Holy Spirit could have easily, folks, just use the word or made, chose words to make it clear that this was the church being caught up. Okay? He didn't. But he gave us sufficient enough reason, sufficient enough evidence to believe that what we're looking at is just that. At least, if, if nothing else, you can say that we're not here. Okay? That's the point. That's the important point. The woman flees into the wilderness for 1260 days where she's nourished, cared for, res where that results in war in heaven, where Satan and his angels are, are cast out to her, down to earth, uh, and a voice in heaven loudly cries out, at this moment, just now, at this instant, is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the acute. And this, you're going to say to me that all this has happened, this is history? Now, wait a minute. This is history. This is already all fulfilled. Seriously. When the Greek RT says, at this moment, now, at this time, at this instant, is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. If this were history, okay, that would make no sense. Because Satan stands before God, folks, accusing you today. All right, but he won't for, for much longer. And they, the tribulation saints, overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, not the first century Christians who were killed. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And I've got to leave it off there. Thank you so much, folks, for, for all of your continued interest in Blessed Hope Forever. I love you all, and I pray for you constantly. Please continue to pray for the direction of this ministry. Until next time, thanks for watching.